All right. So, next question we have is, what is the shadow? And how can we use it to help us rather than harm us? Hmm. Okay, so it's a little complicated. The shadow is a term. Uh, it has different meanings from one culture to the next, but essentially it has to do with our energy that we live out of, operate from. And how energy is either under our conscious management or it isn't. And so part of the answer is the shadow is the unmanaged energy. First of all, unmanaged. We're only partially aware of it. Just as the shadow only partially shows the forms of a person. And most importantly, because we're only partially aware of it, we tend to operate as if it is not causing an effect. So to that extent, we say we're unconscious of it. But actually, it is causing an effect. And the effect shows up in our daily lives. Because this concept of the shadow is rooted in the idea that we are conscious and unconscious at the same time co-creators in nature. That is to say, we are creating our lives. Our lives are not absolutely fixed. There are laws that are fixed, but the outcome, what our life becomes, is to a great extent our own creation. And certainly how we experience it is our own creation. So, the shadow is the part of our outer world, our outer experience that we're having every day that we are actually creating subconsciously without being aware that we're creating. What does this look like? This looks like something strange happens, it seems to quote come out of the blue, and you're looking at it like, why me? And it certainly isn't what you were hoping for or expecting. That's the negative side of the shadow. We can't immediately see, I have created this. And sometimes, you know, people will argue like, there's no, no way I created this. It's not me, it's not me. It's hard to take, it's hard to take, right? Yeah. But the other side of this is, let's say, uh, the creative side that we like, you know, that we're happy with. So, let's say I was working on a project and I suddenly came up with a great idea. And then when I employed this idea, the outcome of that again was all kinds of extra accolades and things that happened in my life as a result of that, that I never could have predicted it was going to go out like that, right? And so we kind of liked that part of the shadow. Like, wow, that was great. I didn't think that was going to happen. So the point is that we are co creators the whole time. We are co creators conscious and co creators. Unconscious. And in the yoga tradition, we see the self as having seven essential levels of creative potential. So it's not just simply what I'm thinking. Case in point, a lot of people will either support or absolutely deny what's called the law of attraction. I hear it all the time in relationship to this. Well, I was being positive, so why did these negative things happen? And when the person is saying, I was being positive, they're thinking of, I was thinking positively about life. <coughs> Excuse me, maybe they were even involved in positive affirmations on a regular basis. But now watch this. Here is the law of attraction. What you run from chases you. So sometimes people choose a route to avoid conflict. Here's the shadow. Oh, you running from conflict? Well, let's bring some conflict right out in front here and see if you're ready to deal with it. Then you end up right back in the same conflict. You try to figure out how did this happen again? I can't believe it. Again, what you run from, why you run from? Because there's a part of you that has actually 
identify the pattern that you're running from. That part of you that has identified this is directly tied to the outcome, and either you're going to face it or you're not going to face it. So we say in the tradition, uh, now the term in uh, Western psychology now, they use the term mindfulness, to be mindful of how things are happening. Uh, basically, we're saying as you emerge, as you are serious about your growth and development, you should be on the lookout for the parts of yourself that you do not understand, parts of yourself that you really don't have a grasp of yet. And then when certain things occur that challenge you, rather than running from them, you should run to them. Not haphazardly, mindfully. Hmm, I never thought this would happen. Let me investigate this. Let me see what's behind this. Knowing the whole time, I'm behind this. What part of me is behind this? So that the shadow now becomes the revealer of the unmanaged powers that you possess. The shadow shows aspects of your personality that you didn't really realize that you had. You really didn't have a grasp on it. The shadow shows certain habits, certain patterns you haven't really noticed yet. And I guarantee you, you could ask yourself certain questions. I find this is very good with relationships. You could ask yourself maybe 10 questions and ask the same question about every single relationship that you have. And you will begin to see the shadow will show up and show you, oh, I never realized I was dealing with people in that way. It will show up. So it doesn't have to be a negative. We can definitely take it and turn it into a tool, a useful way of seeing something that we haven't quite grasped yet. In fact, dreaming is one of the best ways work with the shadow because the dreams can never tell a lie, they can only tell the truth. So people come to me all the time and say, well tell me what this means and then when we talk about it and I tell them what the dream means and then it almost always reveals something they hadn't really put their attention on yet. This is why we're dreaming. The shadow actually reveals itself through dreams. So it's not just negative for me. It's only negative to the degree that we don't like the outcome. We don't like to deal with what it's showing us, which is the very thing that we need to deal with. In the tradition, there's always a period of entry. Then there's a period of development of oneself. One is developing new insights, new skills. But what are these skills for? To conquer one's own darkness. That's where the shadow comes in. Like in the Wisdom of Oz, at some point, if we really want to grow, we have to face the Wicked Witch, and through our spiritual understanding, which is what that water represented, we have to resolve old patterns that are taking our energy from us, so that we can reclaim that energy, and then use it consciously, mindfully, as we create our future intention. Well, just what you described just now remind me of... Um... Agent Smith and Neil, the yes. similar process. Right. Agent Smith is the side of Neil that Neil has to come to grips with. Yeah. Right. As, as it gets stronger. Right. He has like a million Agent Smiths. Right. You know, but ultimately, they have to go through the absorption process in another Right. Areas. One has to reabsorb the energy that is being wasted, which is what the shadow just shows you, they just being wasted. One has to reabsorb this energy back into oneself. And that can only happen through conscious use rather than unconscious use.